All right, welcome to Here's the Deal. This is uh, the card game where it's all about making the right deal and picking the best offer. Um, it plays two to four players that are out 20 minutes after you know how to play the game. Uh, two players plays a bit differently, but I'll talk more about that later. Um, this has two ways to play the game, actually. One is the classic dealmaker version, and the other is more of a casual gamer variant. Uh, we're going to start by explaining the rules that apply to both ways to play the game, and then we'll dive into more of the differences between the two versions. All right, here's a little overview of all the cards that are in the game. Um, so we have our three colors here, and the numbers range from one through four. Each color also will have a wild card, which can act as any of these um, numbers in the sequence. They can also act as a five or a zero. Uh, we also have our switch card here. These are not a part of the sequence of the value cards, but will allow you to kind of rearrange your cards between the sets and runs. Um, you may have also noticed that there's stars in the corner of these cards. Um, these are the victory points that will actually win you the game. Um, you may have noticed that the lower values uh, have more victory points than the higher values in the wilds, but I'll get to the, what all that will mean later in the video. Here's an overview of how the game will be played. The game will consist of three rounds, and each round will have five turns in them. In between each turn, the picker will move to the left. After five turns are done in that round, each player will be collecting their victory points. Then you reset your cards, and then you start into the round. After three rounds, you take all your victory points, add them up, and the game will be over. All right, so in this game, uh, players will be picking cards from offers uh, presented to them on the table. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about how that happens later on in the video, but first I'm going to talk about what the cards do and how they kind of score points for you. So let's say um, this player has to choose between these two uh, offers. Uh, they would pick, be picking one of these and then creating sets and runs uh, with the cards in front of them. So I already have a run going here, so I could potentially, I would need to put this one with this two and three, and then I would have a run of three cards here. Now, before when I didn't have that, uh, these two cards were worth zero points. In order to uh, collect actual points in this value points in this game, you need to have a minimum of three cards. So right now, everything is worth zero. This would be worth uh, three points. Now, if I had that four on over here as well, this would be worth four points. Or if I just had these three cards, this would also be worth three points. It doesn't matter the number on the card, it just matters the amount of cards. So um, I could put this wild red over here. I could put it as a three or a one, but it was still would be worth zero uh, value points until I get a third uh, card on this sequence. Now you can also make cards into sets. A set is the same number that is different colors. So right now I have three fours. And the way sets work are, it is whatever that number is. So I have two fours in a wild, this essentially acts as a four, and this is worth four points. So if I had three ones, it would only be worth one point. So in some ways, runs are a little bit better because you get more consistent points. Let's say um, I am choosing between these two um, offers again, um, and I go with this one, I would need to put this card with a valid group. So I would have to put it uh, with this two upon accepting it. Now, the one exception here is the switch card. The switch card does not go with any of these groups. What it instead does is a one-time action card that lets you rearrange all the cards out in front of you. So in this case, I could remove this four from this other four and add it on to my run instead of this set. Um, I could split these up. I can essentially place them however I want this one time. Now, this card um, won't get you any points for value, but it is worth three victory points. So let me talk about victory points here. So at the end of the game, let's say um, these are the cards in front of you. Everyone's gonna have 10 cards. Um, you would count up your value points. So in this case, I would only be getting four points because these cards are not in a group of three. 
and these are just singles. Um, so I would take all the cards that are in front of me, I would shuffle them all up, and let's say my four value points was the most compared to all the other players in front of me. So in that case, I would be randomly drawing three cards, looking at them, and choosing to keep two of them. So in this case, this is a pretty good draw. I have the choice between uh, two twos and a three. So I'm obviously gonna choose to keep uh, the two and the three, and that's gonna be worth five victory points at the end of the game. So I'm gonna be keeping these hidden over here in secret so everyone doesn't know what each other's victory points are. And these cards are gonna end up back in the, the draw deck for the next round. But um, if you, for instance, had the least amount of value points, you would be taking all of your cards and just flipping the top one and that's how many get. So this is just worth one point. That's a bit of a bummer. Um, if you have the second or third amount, you would be uh, flipping two cards and keeping one. So in this case, it would have been the same thing because I would just be keeping the one and I wouldn't want zero point. But it could be something like, I mean, it could be uh, a three and a one. And in this case, I'd be keeping the three for sure. The interesting thing in this game is um, you could get a lot of value points by playing these high-end cards. You can be playing fours and wilds and be getting four points and three points and all, all large value cards. But when you go to shuffle all your cards together, you're less likely to get high victory points because these are lower in victory points. So even if you get last place and you only have like one or two value points, maybe even no value points, you're still guaranteed one card. And so you could, as you flip through your one card, you could flip that three victory point card. Now we're gonna talk about how you actually collect the cards, and that's gonna be by accepting offers that are presented to you on the table. We're gonna start with the classic deal maker version of this game, which is the intended way to play this game, but might prove a little less intuitive for younger players. Um, so we're gonna start by dealing four cards to each player, and each turn you're going to be determining one player as the picker. And so this player is going to be the picker first, um, but when their turn is done, it's going to be going to the left of the picker, then it will go in here, and then back around, and so on. So everyone will get chances to take turns as the picker. Now, the picker is going to look at their cards and kind of see what they have, but they're not actually going to play cards from their hand. What's actually going to happen is, starting with the player on the left, they're going to be choosing an offer for the picker. So maybe they're going to be choosing um, these two cards. And then this player is going to look at these cards, see maybe what the picker may want, if they have cards in front of them, and they're going to be making an offer as well. So let's say this is their offer. So then the picker will have to choose one of these two uh, groups to play down in front of them. Now they can look at their cards and kind of choose. And let's say um, this player is like, hmm, I have this blue too, so maybe that could be useful. So they're gonna choose this offer and they're gonna have to play these cards together because they can legally be placed together. And then what's gonna happen is the other two players are going to um, either keep the cards in front of them or play cards from the hand. If your offer was rejected, like this player, this player's rejected offer is gonna be going down in front of them. And the cards that were still in their hand remain in their hand. Now, player that the offer was accepted, the two cards that were remain in their hand will now be going in front of them. So everyone's gonna be getting two cards. These cards don't go together but they could be useful still in the future. At the end of the round, as this would be the case, each player is gonna draw back up to four cards, no matter how many cards they use that round. As the game goes on, it'll become more apparent as to which each player is really after. So you can tell this player really wants uh, a red three or a uh, two yellow, and this person wants a blue three. And so when you're looking at your cards, you know what offers would be more, more tempting to certain players and not. 
also what you're really going for um, as the game kind of goes on. Trying to play this game of what is the sweet spot for the picker and what can work for you as well. So once when the turn ends and everyone has 10 cards, all players will be taking their cards and collecting them. But first they would be determining who has the most value points. In this case, um, it would actually be a tie between um, this player and this player um, because they have three and a run, and they have three and a run, and this person would have zero. So in this case, um, if there is a tie of value points, um, the tying players uh, for first would both um, draw two cards and keep one. Now, this person would only be getting one random card and not even any options to choose from. Um, if it would be a tie for second, then the person that got first would be drawing three cards and keeping two, and the time players would be drawing two and keeping one. So you would, everyone would be taking their cards out in front of them, shuffling them all up, and drawing the appropriate amount of cards for how they did value. Now, after everyone looks at their cards and they see how many victory points they're getting, they're all gonna be keeping them aside, face down, and they're gonna stay there the rest of the game. So these cards are now out of the game. And um, let's say that's their card, and they get uh, this one as well. All the rest of the cards in players' hands, they're out in front of them, they're all gonna go back into the deck and get shuffled. After the third round has ended, players are gonna be pulling from their victory point piles that they've set aside from the three rounds and determining who the winner is. So this person would be getting seven victory points. This person would be getting um, seven as well. And this person would be getting, ooh, five. So in this case, um, these players would have tied for the most victory points. Um, and you would normally look at whoever has the most switch cards. In this case, um, neither of them have any switch cards. And so you would be looking at whoever has the most cards total. In this case, it would be this player. So this player would win with seven points and five cards as opposed to four cards here. How a two player game works. So for a two player game, each player is gonna be getting four cards. And there is gonna be an NPC player right here that is essentially going to be automatically offering. So this player is the picker. What happens is the NPC will always be giving the first offer. So they will flip over up two cards just randomly and that's their offer, actually a pretty good offer. So the other player will see that offer and be making another offer accordingly. And so this player gets to choose between these two cards. Let's say they choose this offer uh, from the NPC, this player, just the same way their cards go down. If the NPC's offer was rejected, those cards would be discarded. The NPC never collects any cards. Essentially, each player will be taking turns being the picker and making an offer, and they will just be responding to whatever the automated offer is from the NPC. So I already explained the deal maker uh, version of the game, which is the original way to play. But in this version, it's a casual gamer version. So what's gonna happen in this, turn, in this version is no one's gonna have any cards in their hand. And what's gonna happen is that whoever the picker is, um, they're going to be presented an offer to them that's just comes from the deck of cards. So um, they could choose between these two offers. This player is gonna pick this one. Um, they don't go together yet, but maybe they could in the future. And then these cards that were rejected are gonna get split, and you're just gonna flip up a new card for each uh, group. And then this player is gonna go. Um, they're going to pick this offer, and then these get split. And this will continue until all players have 10 cards in front of them, and that will signal the end of the round. Round setup and victory points remain the same way to play in both versions of the game. So basically, you're not gonna be making any offers to each other. They're just gonna get flipped up from the deck of cards. Um, this way, 
um, is a lot easier for people not having to try to play this mind game of like what is the best offer that I can make for the person, what cards am I going to be keeping, and so on and so forth. Just for some clarification, um, a set cannot consist of uh, ones from the same color, they have to be different colors. And if you were to get a card that can go into either group, um, so this blue wild for instance, this can go in either one, you may choose uh, which two groups you want to put it in, but it still has to go somewhere. Let's say you receive this yellow wild card. Um, this can go on either side of this one, and it can even act as a zero card. Um, this is useful because it leaves open for twos and other cards that already have numbers on them. And in this case, this would be worth three points, even though um, there is a zero in here. Um, and it can go all the way up um, to five points. Um, actually, it can go up to six points if you really wanted to. I've never seen this happen, but if you could have a run of six cards in here and that'd be worth six points. Now, that would not work with a group of wilds, so if you are left with something like this, that is not worth any points. You need at least one card of a value in here in order for worth points. So you could do this, and it would be worth one point. Not the best, you would probably want something more like a four in there. Um, because you're already using wilds, you might as well try to get a number in there. However, if you are forced to take a card like this, um, even if you don't want it in there, and if it could legally be placed in there, it has to still go in there. But later on, if you get a four and a switch card, you can easily switch that out with this one and leave it floating. Um, you could even split up runs and then later put ones in here and then maybe have a yellow there. So um, this switch is nice. Uh, late in the game when you have a lot of cards out in front of you so you can then rearrange them how you want So that's how you play the game. Um, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to contact me for any clarifications um, There may be something I'm missing that I'm not entirely sure that I haven't encountered yet in playtesting so please uh, Message me and ask for some clarification and I can even use that information to update the rules video. Thanks so much for playing. I hope you enjoy the game